Hello and welcome to the Jewitches Podcast, a bi-weekly podcast hosted by Jewitches.com. Every episode we dive into a new topic on Jewish witchcraft, magic, mysticism, folklore, and practice. And in our many episodes, we break down interesting topics in just about 10 minutes. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. Follow us on Instagram at Jewitches, Tumblr and Twitter at The Jewitches, and join us on Patreon. Links and citations are always available in the description. Hello and welcome to the Jewitches mini episode where we talk about something for about 10 minutes. Today we are talking about God's best food, garlic. This episode was voted on by my patrons. If you would like to support the Jewitches podcast, you can become a patron where you also get to vote on what you'd like to hear about. We're going to just jump right in, but remember you can support us on Patreon or on anchor.fm, our hosting platform. Garlic has been, arguably, part of Jewish life since the very beginning. In Numbers 11, 5, we read, We remember the fish we used to eat free in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melon, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. The love of garlic is documented even in the Torah, just as we read, and time and time again within our sacred texts. Jews have even been known as garlic eaters throughout history. Many images of Jewish People have historically featured garlic, generally combined with other anti-Semitic features, stereotypes, and tropes. If you're interested in seeing some of those images, a post that contains them is available via our Instagram and our Tumblr. If you are a Tumblr user, we are active on Tumblr at The Jewitches, and the Tumblr queue makes it so that we are posting every single day. So let's talk a little bit more about garlic. Garlic is discussed at length in the Talmud. The sages taught in Abaraita that five matters are stated with regards to garlic. It satisfies, it warms the body, it causes one's countenance to shine, it increases one's sperm, it kills parasites that are in the intestines, and some say that it also instills love in those who eat it and removes jealousy from them. Bavakama 82a11. These reasons were expanded upon by communities across the diaspora. Garlic is a medicinally potent plant. Its medicinal qualities have long been known within folk communities, and it is now being studied in labs across the world for its heart function, its cardiac value, uh, its value as an aphrodisiac, and for many other things. But those are not its only function. Garlic is also spiritually protective. For most of its history, illness, disease, and by extension, the healing of said maladies were all part of a spiritual ecosystem. Demons and evil entities were often believed to be the cause of illness, and to cure any illness wasn't merely stopping a series of physical symptoms, it was ridding the patient of whatever evil plagued them. And garlic was not only delicious, but powerfully protective. Across the diaspora, Jews used garlic as a means of protecting themselves physically and spiritually. Bulbs of garlic were hung in doorways and windows. Plants tended to be near and around the home. Bulbs and cloves and even heads of garlics were tucked into pockets, bursika, tashele, sewn into the lining of clothes, placed beneath pillowcases, gifted to one another, and so much more. If one was going to spend the night outside in the field, it was recommended they wear a bulb of garlic around their neck. Garlic was included in numerous rituals for healing, protection, and cleansing. In one ritual for removing the evil eye, to quote, The patient's scalp would be smeared with a clove of garlic prepared while reciting a conjuration based on the dialogue between the prophet Elijah and the she-demon Lilith. Garlic is also an aphrodisiac. The Gemara explains the next ordinances that Ezra the scribe ordained, that one should eat garlic on Shabbat Eve. This is due to the fact that garlic enhances sexual potency, and Friday night is an appropriate time for conjugal relations. Bava Kama 82a10. Garlic is also a popular food to be eaten on wedding nights for the same reason. Garlic often didn't work alone, however. 
It was often paired with other protective items like knives, salt, amber, coral, other protective herbs like rue, cloves, rosemary, etc., incense, and other protective items. To quote, in another pamphlet attributed to Eliyahu Gutmacher, the tzaddik of Gretz, the main text of the amulet began with the phrase, for he will order his angels to guard you wherever you go, Psalm 9111. The booklet also contained the information on the ingredients of incense to be burned in the home during an epidemic. These included sage, juniper, mint, red deer horn, and the peel of a tart apple. The author further mentioned hanging onions, garlic, and toadstools in the window and doorways as a protective measure. During the Spanish Inquisition, there were many ways of identifying Jews and conversos, Jews living in secret, forced under threat of death or expulsion to become Catholic. Now, according to some scholars, the scent of garlic in a home was enough to warrant torture and even death to be put upon some people. To quote, just as heretics and Jews have always fled from Christian doctrines, so have they always fled from Christian customs, a priest wrote. They never lose the Jewish habit of eating garbage of onions and garlic fried in oil. Andrew Bernaldez was chaplain to the Archbishop of Seville in Spain during the Spanish Inquisition. And according to food historian Rabbi and chef Gil Marx, to quote, Historically, the addition of garlic was among the typical Jewish touches that enhanced local dishes. In many cultures, the presence of garlic marked a dish as Jewish. To quote the Babylonian Talmud, Barachot 51a, Shall one who ate garlic and his breath smells return and eat garlic again so that his breath should continue smelling? This is a rabbinic idiom for two wrongs do not make a right. Not only do we quote garlic as a use in idioms, we also live by it. To quote, in the Middle Ages, the German areas around the towns of Speyer, Worms, and Mainz were home to large, vibrant Jewish communities. A popular acronym for these areas took the first letter from each town, S, W, which is written with a double U sound in Hebrew, and M echoed the Hebrew word for garlic, shum. The area was known as Kehilas Shum, the community of garlic. And we don't just write about it. And we don't just live by it, we also write about it. The medieval Italian poet Emmanuel Ben Shlomo of Rome, also known as Monuello, wrote in the late 1200s in his poem from the Hungry Praise, for heart's redeemer is the onion, garlic, leek, my peace, Garlic is earth stag and blossom. There's nothing we love more than garlic, other than citations. For this podcast episode, we have our very own Jewitches.com article on herbs and Judaism. We also have a podcast episode that discusses it as well. You can find all of the citations there as well. We have Safaria for those quotes. We have H.com's article on six little known garlic facts, a brief history of Jews and garlic by Jordan D. Rosenblum, and a frog under the tongue, Jewish folk medicine in Eastern Europe by Mark Tujewicki. Thank you all so much for listening. If you have not yet, please feel free to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts, follow and download. If you haven't yet, please feel free to rate and review. Every single rating and review means so much to this podcast. It really does help. We hope to see you again soon.